Welcome to Bell Multimedia. Today I wanted to show you a new computer that I picked up. This is a 2008 Mac Pro with two quad-core 2.8 Xeon processors. Originally back in 2008, this computer retailed for over $2,500 roughly. And I picked it up on eBay for $106 which I think is a good deal, especially since it was local pickup, so that was free. Wanted to talk about a problem that's very common with reshipping these units. If it's not shipped in its original packaging and it's not properly packaged during shipping, oftentimes there's gonna be damage to the one of the four handles. And as you can see on this unit, we have damage to this front handle. We have a bend in the top handle, and then we actually have a separation here on the side. If you can see in there, a threaded boss in there that is popped loose from the handle. The rest of the, the unit is very nice cosmetically. But as you can see, we got a pretty good bend there. And obviously here, we have a really large bend. So what I assume is at some point during shipping, this box that this computer was in got flipped upside down. and some pressure was put down on here causing this bend and causing this corner to push outward so in my research online about mac pro case separations and damage i see a lot of it and it's a lot of the same scenario where it's arrived after being shipped by um, third party or a private seller and they have damage. If it's shipped in the Mac Pro original box, the original packaging is sufficient to protect it, but this is actually seems like a common problem. And the only thing I've found online is blog discussions about it and people making some suggestions and often the end answer is just to buy a new case. So I've never really seen a good solution online or any pictures or videos. So this is gonna be a first for me. And hopefully this will be able to help out someone with a similar situation. So to make working on this computer a little easier, what I've done is taken out the optical drives and I've taken out the power supply the hard drives, and the graphics card, just to avoid damaging anything in that area. So in order to help understand what the best way is to repair this, is to understand how this is manufactured. So what there is is a, an inner frame. Then there's one formed, continuously formed piece of aluminum wrapping around the back. and around the front and the top. And then of course, the handle is one continuous piece all the way down and around, kind of like a C shape. And then what they did, we can see that, you can see those screws up at the top that's what's actually connecting the outer skin, the C-shaped skin to the frame. So for example, along this back, there's approximately eight screws on the back. So there's eight screws going along here. There's approximately 
eight screws going down each end and I'm not sure if there's mo even more behind the motherboard or not. So really if you wanted to do this the best way the best way would be to strip down the computer take all of the insides out to get full access to all those perimeter screws connecting the frame to the skin take those out and then this skin would completely separate from the frame and you'd be able to to work on it a lot easier I'm straightening it making any modifications that you need to and then putting it back and screwing it back together that's a lot of work I think what I'm gonna try to do is I'm gonna take the eight screws off this end since I really only need to work on this area and I'm gonna try to lift the skin up about an inch so it clears the top and then I'm gonna try to straighten this so I'm gonna start off by removing these eight screws along here okay so I've taken the broken screw and boss out and as you can see it's just a t10 torque head screw going into a threaded boss there on the left which fits into a recessed hole in the side of the skin i'm not really sure yet how it's attached whether it's just pressed in or adhesive or or what so what I'm going to try to do first here is I just got a clamp going from side to side and I have an old mouse pad that I've cut up and used to uh, protect the anodized finish on all the sides. So I'm just going to try tightening this up and seeing uh, if this closes up at all. I'm not too optimistic that it will, but I'm gonna give it a try. Okay, so this is a top view of the Mac Pro. So as you can see, those little threaded bosses which are attached to the outer skin and they go through the frame of the unit. So I'm having a hard time just pulling outer skin up because those threaded bosses are going through holes in the frame so what I'm trying to do now is just put some wedges in between the frame and the skin to try to get those bosses to clear the holes in them. okay so I got a wedge in between the frame and the outer skin pretty much right at the area where it's bent. So what I'm going to do is leave that wedge in there and get some clamps on the outsides of the handle and see if I can bend it in. Okay, this is what it looks like right now. Got a couple different clamps and wedges in there to Try and straighten that. Okay, that's what it looks like now after I've taken the clamps out. It's a little better. Uh, I think I'm going to try to get that little bump out of there. And the end of this is still flared out a little bit. Okay, I got my clamps on. I'm going to try to get that little wave out of that strip now. Just going to tighten that up a little bit and see if I can bend that wave out. Okay, well, it's been about 45 minutes now that I've been clamping, using a combination of clamps and wedges to make uh, fulcrum points. I got that one wave. out of the top 
that was up here. So now I'm just trying to get the gap out of the front. Just trying to get rid of that last gap. Okay, almost there. Um, after I tweaked on the front a little bit, the front edge here uh, does make contact with the case when uh, when this would be theoretically screwed in. There was just there's just a little bit of a gap down here, so now I'm going to try to get that out. Okay, well that took the better part of an hour, but I think I got it. I don't have the screws in yet, but as you can see, it's pretty straight. And I think when I tighten that in, the, that gap will go away. I already dry fit the door with a clamp on there holding the case tight. And it seemed to look pretty good, so now I'm going to put the screws back on. Okay, so after about uh, about an hour and a half of tweaking this clamping wedging and clamping again i th this is the final product i think it came out pretty good i mean there's one small dimple here where a screw is that i really can't straighten that but all of this is straight now and from the front you can see it's the gap is pretty small unfortunately I could not figure out how to reattach the one screw boss that's on the end if, on, if that was there then this would draw draw in even better but the seven screws on the side are holding it just fine and uh, let me show you what it looks like with the back on so this is what it looks like with the back on you know again it lines up pretty well and with the exception of that one little dimple you can see a little bit more pronounced now but all of this which was flared out is now flush with the back. Oh, we also got the uh, dip in the handle out kind of by wedging underneath here and pushing up on both sides. So in summary, this 1 8 inch aluminum is a little bit more difficult to bend than, than I anticipated, but it's doable. So that's it for now. Thanks for watching Bell Multimedia.